everyone. We're Nick. And Rachel. If you're new here and haven't been following our adventures, you'll typically find us vlogging our travels around the world. But today's video is going to be a little bit different. As we've traveled through various different countries, we've noticed that some things are just a little bit different than what we're accustomed to back home in Canada and the UK. The reason that we have this channel is to both share our experiences, but to do this in the hopes of also inspiring you to travel more. However, we do completely recognize that a number of the countries that we have gone through are ones that maybe you hadn't thought about before, or you just haven't been able to do much research on so far. So with that, to give you an additional helping hand, then we are providing you with some tips and tricks to look out for as you plan your own itineraries in the countries that we visited ourselves. Today's video is going to focus on traveling through Thailand. If you've been watching our videos, then you'll know that we went to Bangkok, Koh Tao, Koh Phangan, Koh Samoy, and Chiang Mai while we were in Thailand. While a few of the pointers will be specific to those cities, a lot of them will be about enjoying the country as a whole. We hope that you find them useful. If you're entering into Thailand, then no matter which country that you are coming from or what passport you are holding, an arrival form is completely necessary for you to fill out. However, generally speaking, with most of the passports from Europe and North America though, then you are able to enter Thailand without a visa, so entry to the country is free. Obviously you can enter Thailand by air or by land, and you could come from any number of countries. However, this next tip is going to specifically focus on our experience where we entered Thailand through Cambodia by bus. We ended up taking a bus from Siem Reap to the Thai border. Now they don't take you through the border, they drop you off just in front of the border and you're expected to walk towards the border where you enter through the foreigner's entrance and you exit Cambodia that way. Then there is a bit of a pedestrian crossing between the Cambodian and Thai border. You walk across that and the Thai officials will enter you into their country. Once you have passed through Thai immigration, then you can just walk over to whatever bus company you have booked with and they will meet you on the Thai side of the border so you can continue on with your onward journey to wherever you're going in the country. For us, this was all booked on one ticket, which was very convenient. As with a lot of countries that we went to in Southeast Asia, then bottled water is king for everything. So we're talking not just about drinking water, but also brushing your teeth and anything that involves you potentially putting that water in your mouth. The good news is, as ever, bottled water is very, very cheap to obtain, so you're not going to be out of pocket in order to do your basic functions. Cash is king in Thailand, but the good news about that is there are ATMs everywhere, so you can use your debit card from home and withdraw cash very easily. With a lot of the places that we went, then either we had rented a motorcycle to get around, or thankfully a lot of the other places were very walkable, so there wasn't much of a need for us to use other means of transport. However, if you do need to call a rideshare, then as with a lot of other countries in Southeast Asia, then Grab is the one of choice. There are so many traditional Thai dishes that we highly recommend you try. We absolutely love Thai food, so actually being able to go to Thailand and experience the authentic thing was a real treat for us. Some of the dishes that we recommend you try are Pad Thai, Pad Siu, Any Thai Curry, Tom Yum Soup, Mango Sticky Rice, Papaya Salad, and Khao Soy. Because these are all traditional foods, you really should not be paying an arm and a leg for any of these dishes. We were able to find them for between 40 and 80 baht, which is about three Canadian dollars per person at the majority of restaurants. And the portions were a very reasonable size. And as I said, the food was absolutely phenomenal. So if you see a restaurant where the prices are significantly higher than that, you're kind of being ripped off. Since we're talking about eating out at restaurants, I feel like I should mention that a lot of restaurants outside of the big city of Thailand seem to close earlier than we would be used to in North America and Europe. 
So make sure that you do some research and find out what time the restaurant you want to go to closes. Some of them do close as early as 8 p.m. Obviously, that's not the case with all of them, but a significant amount do close earlier than you'd expect. However, if you happen to miss out one day for whatever reason, don't worry. There are plenty of convenience stores, especially 7-Eleven, and that is always a very budget-friendly option, and they are open nearly 24 hours a day. As with the vast majority of countries that we've been to, places of worship are free. However, like with what we experienced when we were in Indonesia, then Thailand has also taken to making sure that rather than paying an entrance fee, which these places are not allowed to do, they do require a minimum donation in order for you to enter. So, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. But just make sure that you are looking out for that. As ever though, if you are planning on going to one of these places, and certainly the temples in Thailand are amazing, so we recommend that you do, be respectful, make sure that you are wearing suitable clothing, so keeping your knees and shoulders covered at all times. And for the more important shrines and things like that, then there may be a no phone and no photography policy. So with all of these rules, make sure that you're just being respectful of the space that you're in. One of the things that Thailand is known for is the wonderfully cheap massages that you can get there. An hours long Thai massage is usually about 250 baht or about 10 Canadian dollars if you're in Bangkok or Chiang Mai, but the price rises all the way up to 300 baht per hour when you're on the island. So just be aware that Thai massages are typically cheaper in the cities than they are on the islands. Either way, they are ridiculously cheap, especially when you compare them to prices you find in Europe and North America. And as we said, they were phenomenal and no joke. If you're trying to go from city to city or city to island, then aside from an internal flight, which might be dearer than you think, then the most cost effective way is generally traveling by bus. And fortunately, Thailand is incredibly well equipped for long distance bus travel. If you're planning on doing a long journey like we did to get from multiple places to other ones, we ended up going from Bangkok down to Koh Tao, and then back from Koh Samui all the way up to Chiang Mai, then you'll get used to overnight sleeper buses. And these things are actually really, really good in terms of the service, in terms of the comfort. If you go on one of these, then you'll find that you have an incredibly comfortable seat with plenty of room in front of and behind you to be able to spread out and recline properly to make sure that you get a decent night's sleep. On top of this, bottles of water, snacks, as well as a pillow and a blanket are provided for you to have the most comfortable experience. If you are planning on going from the mainland onto one of the islands, then it is also possible that the bus ticket that you have booked may actually also include a ferry crossing over to the island from the mainland. However, it does depend on the company that you have booked through so it is definitely worth making sure that you do your research if you want to have one of these combined tickets. It is also worth noting that not all ferries are created equal, so depending on the crossing that you're doing, you may find that you're in an adapted speedboat, or you may be in a genuinely decent sized ferry boat. It will just depend, but expect some variations depending on the crossing you're trying to make. Whatever journey you're trying to make though, the great news is that if you're doing it in the way that we did, then it will be very affordable, it will be very comfortable, and it will be very punctual as well, with a lot of care taken in the service. So if you are considering this, then we would recommend it as the most cost-effective way to get around Thailand. Renting a scooter is definitely the most cost-effective way to get around the Thai islands as there really isn't any public transportation and all of the top tourist attractions are kind of spread out so it's not very walkable. 
The good news, though, is that the majority of roads on the islands are very well taken care of and they're pretty quiet, so it's safe for even a somewhat inexperienced rider to rent a bike and explore that way. The same cannot be said for in the major cities, as the roads are absolutely packed with traffic and because of this busyness, unless you are comfortable and have experience riding a scooter or bike, we just don't recommend that you do it if you're in Bangkok or Chiang Mai. But the good news is that in Bangkok, some parts of it are pretty walkable and there is public transportation there. And in Chiang Mai, that is definitely a walkable city, so you can get around without having to rent a bike or scooter. And if all else fails, there's Grab. If you decide to rent a scooter, most places will either ask for a very large sum of money or a passport as a deposit, but we didn't run into any issues having the deposit returned to us. The other thing that we should note here as well is you do need to have an international driver's permit even if the company that you're renting the scooter from doesn't ask to see it. If you are stopped by the police, they will ask to see it and if you don't have it on you, there will be hefty fines. If you're going to be in Thailand, then it's very, very likely that you're going to be spending some time in its capital of Bangkok. What you may not know so much is that Bangkok as a city is vast. It is a very, very sprawling settlement. Journey times between specific places may take you some time. Therefore, it's really important that you take a look at the points of interest that you want to go and see and that you locate yourself as close to them as possible because otherwise you may find yourself needing to commute to those tourist sites every single day and that could be quite a long journey time. We chose to be in the old part of the city which made it very, very walkable for us and actually was very convenient because then that ended up saving us money on the likes of public transport or a grab or a tuk-tuk which is also available here. However, we do know that there is a lot of relatively affordable accommodation that is also available in the newer parts of the city, but do bear in mind that getting from those parts to some of the points of interest, especially places like Wat Arun and the Grand Palace and things like that, may be a lot more expensive and also maybe a journey of over an hour to get there. If you love to party, then Khao San Road in Bangkok is the place for you. Just note that it doesn't really get going until about 8 p.m. at night, but when it does get going, oh my goodness, there are flashing colorful lights and the music is pumping. We could not hear each other or have a conversation while we were eating dinner because of how lively the atmosphere is. It's definitely a fun place to be because you can sit outside and get a massage, you can get some really cheap and affordable traditional Thai food, you can find vendors selling insects, you will be offered cheap drinks as well as nitrous oxide by the restaurant and pub owners. It is really a unique place that we do recommend going to see. However, if you want something a little quieter, then just one street over, Rambutri Road runs parallel and it offers all of the great things that Khao San Road offers in terms of massages and delicious local street food, but with far less noise. One of the major animals and one of the symbols of Thailand is their elephants. And certainly there are so many opportunities for you to get to see them in a safe environment. However, we wanna put out a bit of a PSA about this just to make sure that if you are gonna be interacting with an elephant in Thailand, you're doing it in a responsible manner because we've been finding this out as we've been traveling and as we've seen other YouTubers do this as well. Whatever you do, and we cannot stress this enough, if there is an option to ride an elephant, please do not do it. We've actually found out that riding elephants hurts them while you're riding them, first of all, but prolonged exposure to riding also means that they develop issues further down the line. So if you are an animal lover and you don't want to interact with the elephants in any way that's going to hurt them, please do not get on the back of one. It's not going to help anything. Instead though, there are a number of sanctuaries that are dotted all around the country, but most of the best and cheapest ones are based in Chiang Mai. And sanctuaries are really the way forward if you want to 
interact with elephants in a more ethical and sustainable manner. And by going through these sanctuaries, then you will get to feed the elephants. You may get to walk with them, bathe them, and basically get up close and personal with these beautiful and magnificent creatures. In terms of recommendations on sanctuaries, we went with Kanta, which was just outside Chiang Mai, and we had a wonderful time. But there are a huge number of them, especially in the Chiang Mai area, that you can choose from, and they all offer something a little bit different. So in terms of what you may want to do while keeping it ethical, then it's definitely worth just making sure you do your research to make sure you get the best possible experience for you. And that's our list for Thailand. We hope that our tips and tricks have been helpful and that you can apply them to your future travels. We do recognize that this is not an exhaustive list, so if you have any questions or further recommendations, please leave us a comment below. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling.